Right, we've looked at paints and now we're going to look at how we put the paint on the canvas or on the paint surface. And the obvious thing, first of all, is to look at brushes. And even more obviously, the traditional oil painter's hog bristle brush, something like that, is just as good for acrylics. This is actually a number eight filbert brush and it's called a filbert brush because as you can see the, uh, the, the brush head is slightly rounded. It's a sort of a flat uh, set of bristles but rounded at the end. So these three brushes, the number eight, that's a number two and there's a number five, are all basically the same shape. Now you can see with these two flat brushes these are made out of a slightly different material. This is a nylon material. This is a one inch flat and, uh, and a half inch flat. And you can see that the nylon material that's been used for the hairs or the filaments is a little bit softer and smoother than the traditional hog bristle that you get on the old oil paint brushes. For the sake of this course, what I've done is got a mixture. Now, I don't want you to worry if you haven't got precisely these brushes in the size or in the type of filament that I happen to be using because many, many types of brushes and sizes of brushes are just as good. It really depends on how big you're going to work. Most of the uh, lessons we're going to be doing is on a canvas panel which is 16 inches by 12. If you're going to work much bigger than that, then obviously you'll need to have to think about getting some bigger brushes. What else have we got to look at? Yeah, there's a big, uh, well it says a one inch brush, and that says a one inch brush. Now, I don't know about you, but some manufacturers not got that one right, but there we go. It's very similar, this is specially made for oil painting in fact, um, but you can get very similar uh, house painting brushes that uh, you can buy from any DIY store. If you're going to buy a house painting brush to paint with acrylics then I suggest you get one that's a reasonable brush. Don't get one of the cheap ones and the cheap sets for a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds that gives you half a dozen brushes of this size because what you'll find as soon as you start to paint the hairs will be shed and they'll be all over your picture and cause you endless frustration. So if you're going to get one of these either from an art shop or from a DIY store, get the best one you can afford so that the hairs and the bristles stay in place. This is fantastic, it's ideal for filling in large areas, particularly if you're doing the background for skies and so on. What else have we got? Uh, let's have a look at this. We've got a nylon round brush here. That's again more like the sort of round brush that you would get uh, with a watercolour brush. That's fine for details and it's going to be very good when we come to paint uh, the branches of trees and, uh, and tree limbs and, and similar sort of things. The fan brushes, these two, two fan brushes, uh, exactly the same. One's in hog bristle and one's in nylon and as you can see slightly different sizes. Again when you come to paint for instance fir trees or a little bit of blending of clouds then they're absolutely ideal. And then finally we have the rigger and if you've seen other courses that I've done or other videos you'll know that I've said many times that the rigger uh, was designed originally for painting the rigging on ships. It's a very long set of hairs, uh, very slim, and if the paint is thinned down, you can get some very, very fine lines. But it's also very good if you want to scrub on texture, for example, in rocks and, uh, and trees, if you want to scrub sideways like that. So there we are, 10 brushes. I'm not suggesting that you need to get 10 brushes to start painting in acrylics. They're the brushes that I'm going to be using in the course and I'm certainly not going to be using every one of those brushes in every lesson. I'll probably only use two or three at most. But what I'd suggest is that have a look at the brushes that you've already got in your collection and pick out the nearest. And it doesn't matter if it's nylon and I'm using the hog equivalent or vice versa. Pick out the nearest and use that one instead and see how that works for you. And only go and look to buy another one if you really feel that you haven't got anything broadly equivalent to what I'm using. 
So there we are, there's the brushes I'm gonna use in the course. Let's now have a look at some of the other things that you can paint with when you're using acrylics. Now, apart from brushes, there's a lot of other things you can use to actually put paint on to the painting surface. The most obvious ones that perhaps everybody is familiar with are the palette knives. This one's got a, a particular shape on it that means that you can scrape on and you can drag it down to create snow cap mountains and we're going to have a look at that precisely that technique uh, in one of the future lessons. You can also put paint along the edge and scrape it down to create ship's masts or even the little white silvery line that you get under a far distant river bank. This is exactly the same except as you can see you've got two quite different shapes and angles so in certain circumstances this might be better if, you, if you, you're scraping stuff on and trying to manipulate it into something that looks like foreground rocks and stones. And here's something that you might not have thought of. This is an old credit card that I've cut up and many people might say that's the best thing you can do with a credit card. But what I've done is cut the credit card up to different lengths of line, if you see what I mean. So that when you put some paint on each line, again, you can very easily just almost stamp it onto the picture. And that's great for getting a lovely hit and miss, irregular straight line, but an irregular line for a mast, for example, where you don't want a dead straight line that can look too harsh. Uh, if you look at masts in real life with the sun uh, shining off them, Half the time you see the mast coming in and out of the sunlight and that's ideal for creating that sort of effect. Or if you want to, you can scrape it down and create a different type of texture. Now in the same vein as the uh, credit card, this is a, uh, a glue spreader that's uh, very, very cheap. It only costs a few pennies or a few cents from uh, many craft shops. You can see it's got a slightly flexible uh, tip on it, but if you for instance, you'd painted a wall and you wanted to just pull out a window, you can just scrape that down or a, or a door next to it perhaps, and it'll actually give you a very neat uh, doorway in the paint. Or you can put paint on and do exactly the same, but just add the window to a uh, light surface. Right, now this little chap is what's called a colour shaper. And as you can see, uh, hopefully if I, if I do that there, you can perhaps see it. It's got a very flexible uh, pointed tip. And you can get these rubber tips in all sorts of different hardnesses and different shapes to give you different effects. But where this is particularly good is if you had, if you can imagine an area of paint and you wanted to pull out some light coloured trunks or branches in the middle distance, then this will lift the paint out, push it to one side and leave you with a lighter area underneath. Saves you actually paint, it's sort of painting negatively. Very, very useful uh, little device. Exactly the same principle goes with the Commoner Garden toothpick and it's not quite as flexible, but you can do all sorts of scratching out, if you like, to create textures in the paint that you've put down. So, there are many other things. There's, oh, before I forget, there is one other. And this is a piece of ordinary mount card. This is a, the card that you would use to put round a watercolour painting. And in much the same way as you use the credit card, you can put paint along the edge, or you can rip it off if you like, and make it as long or as short as you want. You can put paint down the edge to give yourself a nice straight line. Or with this slightly jagged edge, let's, Draw, let's rip that at an angle, that's better. With a slightly jagged edge, you can put paint on and spread it out, perhaps across the fields in the foreground of a painting, and it'll give you all sorts of random and unpredictable textures with the paint. You can put two or three colours of paint on at the same time and just spread it around. You really don't know what's going to happen, and that's the great fun of it. And it costs you absolutely nothing, a little piece of card. But I hope you can see this. All of these items, including the card, uh, will help you to put the paint on and give you additional textures and uh, techniques. And really, if you can think of other things around the house that you can use as well, then brilliant, so much the better. It's only limited by your own imagination. So there we are. 
With the brushes and these little devices, you've got a whole range, a, a huge armory of putting paint down, acrylic paints on painting surfaces to give yourself the best chance of a great picture.